Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to be talking about top 10 damage over time champions in Marvel Constant Champions. And uh, for today's list, before we get to it, I just want to kind of like clarify some criteria on what and how I based uh, my placements for. And please do remember that this is absolutely subjective uh, ranking video. I do not at ever given point proclaim that to be some sort of ultimate truth. Uh, but I think that being said, a uh, couple of the things that I was definitely looking for. Number one was solid, strong damage output with damage over time effects. Number two was reliable access to these damage over time effects. For instance, we have some extremely potent damage over time abilities in the game that are either RNG based or quite infrequent in its fighting nature, I would say. So that is also something that I was looking for in the champions. And number three, that these champions are overall present in meta and are also good champions that people want to focus on, people want to rank up, that people do bring in for Alliance Quest, Alliance War, for clearing Act 6 and so forth. So there are champions, for instance, Carnage. Carnage has amazing amount of bleeds and insane damage output once he's ramped up. He's not really a meta champion. Similarly, I didn't include, for instance, Massacre, just uh, for the same reason, because I don't really think he kind of like qualifies up there. Medusa, uh, again, can stack up insane amount of bleed, but that's not what she's primarily known for. She's her only use in meta realistically, typically, is for shutting down robots. And then we have Elsa, and same as Symbiote Supreme, can acquire a lot of bleed debuffs that are extremely potent, but that is uh, nowhere close to what he's known and used for. Now, another champion that I do have to mention is Quake. I have excluded Quake for this list. Uh, well, partially because Quake makes it in everywhere, and everybody by this point should know how Quake great is. And technically, if Quake were to qualify, obviously she would immediately rocket to kind of like top of the list by being the best champion in the game, in my opinion, plus delivering 100% of her damage with damage over time effect, even though it is obviously not the highest damage output champion. She is by far the best damage over time champion in game, quite undisputedly, in my opinion, uh, being the best champion in the game, period, and having all of her damage come from damage over time, passive effect, which uh, nothing is immune to, basically. So, yeah, Quake it would be, but Quake has been left out for the sake of this video. But before I actually start listing the champions, I just wanted to give a quite quick shameless plug. I wanted to give a shout out to a mate of mine who has started uh, working on his own YouTube channel. He is from NY718 and he uploads a ton of content I actually quite frequently watch myself. You can see uh, Alliance War footage there. You can see a whole ton of crystal openings as well. You can see that he, I think, posted 250 crystals for Guardian. There is a lot of interesting stuff. So I have subscribed to him. I find uh, quite a lot of his videos entertaining. So I uh, suggest you might as well go give it a try. Go over Vega Gaming 583. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description below. And uh, yeah, check him out. Uh, see what you think. And if you like what you see, then hit him a sub. He's quite new at this, but he's definitely taking it seriously. As you can see, he's uploading uh, every day pretty much. And he's also purchasing software and hardware to kind of like make it more well quality improve the quality of the channel and all that good stuff so yeah go and check him out but and now let's quickly uh start in the list i don't want to stretch out this video and uh placement number 10 is already immediately gonna rub a lot of people off because it's domino and domino i think pretty much can put the biggest damage over time uh, uh, debuffs on opponent with some insane bleed numbers. Now the problem with it is uh, it's not reliable at all when it comes to her bleed because you never know it's going to be critical bleed and you also don't really know how big is it going to be and those mega bleeds only come in like really really long fights. Now she does have uh, another thing that kind of like prevented her from being higher on the list because she only actually has very uh, small amount of chance to inflict those bleeds with her special attacks. Obviously if you're lucky then you have uh, higher chance to inflict those bleeds but at their base uh, you only have like 25 percent chance per hit to inflict those bleeds so again it's a bleed that can potentially finish out the fight but again uh building up level two or uh, is quite a big thing and then not having any bleed at all and uh, therefore i cannot ignore the amount of damage that she does however i cannot put her any higher in the list and uh to be absolutely honest i was about to exclude her completely only thing that kind of like maintained her in top 10 damage or time effect champion list is the synergy with Red Hulk, where she consistently 100% guaranteed places 
incinerate on opponent when she's throwing heavy attacks and that is very solid great incinerate damage however again it depends on the amount of damage that you do so if your heavy attacks cannot deal a lot of damage the incinerate is going to be tiny or if the damage is capped so on and so forth so it is again something to keep in mind that there are a lot of limitations to dominoes damage over time effects and there's a lot of rng involved you can get some extremely fantastic crazy results but at the same time for instance domino as a champion who has potential for pretty much or one of the highest bleeds in game being uh, for, for instance horrible option for 6.31 medusa boss who who has do you bleed node active but she also has masochism and other stuff and all of that <laughs> combined uh, basically, yeah, D Domino doesn't make it. There is an option despite having this massive bleed due to the uh, nature of how you distribute the bleed and the fact that she cannot access bleed guaranteed or frequently because she only has access to it via special attacks. And the incinerate is great, it's cool, it's huge damage, but again, it relies on the amount of damage dealt to opponent. So that is something to keep in mind, but still, I uh, wanted to include in her because obviously, yeah, she can put on some insane numbers and I think has a potential for the highest uh, bleed in game. Now, that being said, we're gonna move on to spot number nine and spot number nine, I'm gonna put on Venom. And I think Venom's bleed abilities in the game are actually quite underrated. All of his bleeds are tied in with his critical hits. However, you can control the amount of precision he gets as Venom's getting built up and if you're building him up cor correctly, he is an absolute bleeding powerhouse. The way he works is basically all your critical hits have 80% chance to inflict bleed. Against hero champions, it goes up to like 95% or something like that. And uh, yeah, so only thing uh, that is up to you is actually land a couple of precision buffs. So if you roll something else, land a heavy attack, make sure you have a couple of precisions on an opponent is gonna be bleeding down like crazy. In addition, Venom is fantastic champion all around with all of his other abilities, obviously the number one spider killer and has access to a lot of buffs, to armor break debuff, uh, to buff nullification, which is quite unique for cosmic class as well. So yeah, absolute powerhouse of a champion with a lot of damage coming from a bleed effect. And spot number eight belongs to another cosmic champion and it is Hyperion. And obviously here we are talking about Hyperion's incinerate mechanics because uh, he can get to that level 1 and he can pretty much exclusively spam that level 1. So even though for this list in particular I was largely kind of critical and skeptical of the champions who rely on throwing special attacks uh, in order to access those damage over time effects. However, Hyperion being like the power gain king in the game currently uh, definitely kind of like makes me ignore that bit. And uh, yeah, basically infinite level 1 spam, infinite amount of incinerates, well not infinite. But the coolest thing is that uh, those in that incinerate damage scales with the furies and the attack that you get. So when you we win your heavy attacks in between level 1s, you can do absolute ton of damage. Somewhere on the channel there's also, for instance, a Hyperion uh, Warlock boss solo, where I use Hyperion to solo Warlock uh, Alliance War boss. And that's a three minute fight where he pretty much exclusively only throws level one. So that perfectly showcases the amount of damage that level one can inflict in itself. And uh, yeah, so I put on Hyperion as number eight in uh, top damage over time champions. And number seven is gonna go to a certain mystic. And uh, I guess most of you can guess it. And here it is, the Prince Charming. And obviously we're talking about his incinerate damage, even though his actual kind of like base incinerate damage on the level 2 is uh, relatively negligible. And obviously you have to get to that level 2. So again, he's kind of like an oddball pick here because I typically didn't include any champions who rely specifically on one special attack there. But uh, given uh, long shots mechanics and how he has increased power gain for every uh, bad karma you have on your opponent, getting to level 2 is relatively quick and simple. Uh, however, that incinerate obviously also triggers a nullify, which in return gives you a whole ton of incinerate damage on opponent. And we all have seen how quickly long shot can dispatch of opponents that do have buffs active. When you are talking about kind of like high buff fights, uh, like fights on resistor or fights against venom, so and so forth, long shot uh, is has like one of, if not the highest damage output in the game. And 95% of that damage does come from damage over time effect, which is that passive incinerate effect. Therefore, I didn't feel like I should leave him out because he definitely 
has a lot of potential for damage over time. Additionally, the fact that his mechanic perfectly kind of qualifies within the range of what I uh, typically and frequently look for uh, damage over time champions, which is ability to bypass many damage caps and inflict a lot of damage in the meanwhile. Uh, for instance, he can easily deal with rage that can definitely be helpful or safeguard or whatever else have you anything that uh, triggers I know protection so and so forth so yeah long shot fits in my in my description I don't know the thing that I have in my head uh, for the damage over time champion quite perfectly and obviously nobody can really deny long shot damage output in general so long shot is and now number six spot again belongs to another mystic champion but here the discussion is going to be quite significantly different and first and foremost I do need to find the champion where is that tabster here we go and it's Mojo. And Mojo does have a lot of damage over time damage uh, in his degen, but that's uh, not the, even the main reason why he's here. Uh, because uh, his damage over time capability is obviously extremely potent, especially if you have him awaken high sig with that huge fury, places on a lot of degeneration on opponent. And uh, that's not even the best part, because degeneration in itself is a very, very exclusive and great damage over time debuff to have access to because uh, nobody and nothing in the game is immune to degeneration as a default setting. And uh, having the degeneration to be a passive degeneration is even better because now you are all of a sudden bypassing all of these shrug off abilities, you are bypassing all of these rapid metabolism and whatever else have you because it's passive basically. Pretty much nothing in the game is like really immune to it. Obviously we have Lady Hulk who can combat it uh, decently well, but all in all, Mojo is kind of like most reliable, perhaps behind Quake, champion who has uh, like access to damage over time effect and you know that you can bring him in in most uh, varied amount of matchups. And yeah, therefore Mojo I think deservedly goes on a spot uh, list number 6 over there. And spot number 5 is going to belong to uh, kind of like a old school OG here and that's going to be the Archangel. Obviously Archangel is kind of like a weakness is because... Uh, all of him and all of his abilities and everything that Archangel is does rely on damage over time effect. If opponents bleed immune, you're done. You're gonna have pathetic time and you're gonna wish that you're using Iron Patriot because he can at least armor break or stun the opponent or something, right? Well, pretty much the case. If opponents bleed immune, you're absolutely shafted. However, if you can bleed the opponent, you're already having access to a lot of bleed effects. And I have used Archangel even in fights where opponent is poison immune. He still has a very decent good damage output. Obviously, for him to absolutely shine, you need to have access to bleed and poison. And then it's completely different ballgame. And then he's pretty much upped off as one of the most potent damage over time champions uh, that has maintained his relevance for absolute eons uh, in a mobile gaming world. There have been games that have been made, evolved, got popular and died uh, and did that twice over <laughs> all in a time Archangel has managed to maintain his relevance and I can even make an argument that Archangel is making a steady comeback into the meta as we have more varied and more diverse champion options. We are also increasingly having more and more champions Archangel works perfectly against for and therefore maybe not like as your default questing option but as a champion you take with you for every fight that he does fit he works absolutely fantastically love him as rank 5 uh, neurotoxin damage also works perfectly to bypass life cycle and many different nodes and ob obviously shut down opponents abilities in general and destroy the healing and yeah he's insane he's crazy good and uh, I love him not much to say there uh, and uh, that being said, however, we need to move on and uh, we're gonna move on to Void. Now, Void isn't personally quite my cup of tea champion and he also doesn't exactly excel with uh, incredibly huge damage output. However, there are a lot of abilities that do make him one of the best damage over time champions in the game period, uh, no question. And uh, number one would be that uh, he's pretty much the only or one of the very, very few champions in the game that can... Uh, have the fight, finish the fight, or stall the fight out without actually having a real need to hit the opponent, land attacks on opponent, or use your special attacks. Now, those are some of the really, really kind of like stronger redeeming qualities on Void because you can just slow play it, or you can hit opponent's block if, for instance, landing a hit would be somehow detrimental to the fight. 
but the fact of the matter is that Void will continue with his game plan, game strategy, no matter what. That is huge, that has helped him become as kind of like important and relevant as he is right now. Just these multiple different ways how you can play and the fact that you can always just kind of like switch off and slow play. Additionally, obviously, all the debuffs that he places on opponent are not da damage over time debuffs, they are just regular type of debuffs. So he also bypasses some stuff like corner and so on and so forth. And uh, the damage that he does to the opponent is damage over time, but it is passive ability based damage over time effect rather than the debuffs themselves. So again, uh, this is the kind of stuff that works against the life cycle, so on and so forth. So there are very many conditions where perhaps damage over time effects would not be quite optimal, but the way Void distributes his damage over time is optimal and is different to watch majority of the champions in game. And that works perfectly in his favor and maintains his kind of like relevance in the game. Additionally, the debuffs and the way he works also uh, ignores nodes that shorten the duration of damage over time effect, uh, like rapid metabolism again, uh, or any champion abilities like Rogue or Root or I don't know, whoever else. Because again, those are permanent debuffs, they do not expire, therefore. Again, that's additional kind of like level of safety. So I think that even though Void is definitely not the highest damage output champion, but these all unique qualities that they are permanent, that they are not technically damage out time debuffs, that the damage is being dealt by his ability, so he doesn't trigger cornered, he doesn't trigger stuff like clapback, and many different nodes where other champions who rely on damage out time effects would not be viable and would be hindered, he can just completely ignore and bypass. And I absolutely love that, uh, and that is kind of like great quality for a champion to have. Now, I still don't like Void, but I can't deny that he's a fantastic option when you need somebody who deals damage over time. Therefore, he is in spot number four. Now, top three. Now, let's go to the top three. When it comes to damage over time, obviously, we have to talk about Human Torch. It's kind of inescapable. And again, first and foremost, remember that on any average matchup, Human Torch is relatively mediocre. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have the biggest damage initially, and the craziness starts when you actually go up against Mystic Champion or champions who deal energy damage, and he can build his smolders relatively quickly in the fight. And as we have seen by multiple Abyss videos, uh, that has a potential to get out of hand extremely quickly and then the numbers you see are absolutely insane. The fact that he also has inbuilt heal reversal with his incinerates, which is quite unique and definitely super helpful. Easy access to these incinerates with your like medium lights and heavy attacks and what have you is obviously also extremely great. And possibly the biggest thing that kind of like puts the cherry on top is the Nova Flames. And the fact that nothing in this game is immune to no flames, again, outside of aforementioned Gladiator Hulk who can deal with passive effect, uh, nothing is immune to no flames in game. And that means you pretty much always will have like a guaranteed access, guaranteed way to deliver damage, even though, I don't know, opponents might have tenacity on, opponents might have this immunity, opponents might have that immunity, or whatever else. Human Torch can always kind of like go in and do the job when it comes to uh, dealing and damage over time and that is again a fairly unique it's a fairly exclusive club uh, for those champions as I said Mojo let's say Quake and so on and so forth so there are very very limited options of champions like that uh, obviously Omega Red and Mephisto uh, but yeah so yeah. Human Torch uh, great targeted champion and not for everyone, not for every fight, but when he's good, he's really, really good. And that damage is absolutely insane. Now, huh, let's move on. And uh, spot number two, spot number two is gonna go to Omega Red. He, uh, again, it's uh, largely because of the flexibility and the frequency he can access, obviously. Outside of fighting robot champions, and maybe, I don't know, occasional random uh, Red Skull. He is going to be killing everything and killing everything quickly. He has access to Degeneration, which is a debuff on his heavy attack, but locks in the sports, which also kind of helps him further his gameplay. Uh, but everything else kind of like revolves around having those sports or having the death field active, staying close to the opponent and dealing maximum amount of damage. And Omega Red is one of the MVPs in Alliance Wars for X amount of seasons already. He's many people's favorite questing champion, just how quickly he can melt down other champions. 
haven't seen him use that much in IQ, I guess, but uh, it's probably because he has a busy schedule. And again, I'm not personally absolutely in love with Omega Red, it's not really my playstyle, uh, but I do use it, and quite recently I again started kind of like using him as my random questing champion after Red Guardian synergy, where he starts the fight with five of, uh, of his spores active on the opponent, so that helps him ramp up even quicker. And uh, there's a lot of great stuff happening, and basically the entire kind of like skill set that he has with his immunities, him being able to benefit from bleed, being super suicide friendly, uh, make him an insane champion overall, and kind of like one of the top champions in game. And in addition to that, uh, obviously, a lot of his damage comes from damage or time effect from these spores, which is like a passive damage or time again, which pretty much nothing is immune to in game. And that is just crazy. That's a crazy level of new good if you run Suicide Masters. If you don't, then uh, it's hardly as impressive and it takes much longer to ramp up. But obviously, he's still a great champion. Uh, but he's definitely one of those where you have a feeling that you're playing two completely different champions depending whether you do or do not have Suicide Masters active. But yeah, uh, can't praise uh, him enough, I guess. And he is an insanely great damage over time champion. And spot number one, and I feel that most of the people uh, will have realized and figured out who is spot number one, and that's going to be Nick Fury. And uh, Nick Fury is just a beast with the highest easily acceptable damage over time effects by a mile. The fact that he plays his bleed with his like mediums, lights, heavy attacks, everything he does basically just means that there's going to be absolute ton of bleed effects flying around in every single fight. In addition, he's an insane champion overall, but when you fully ramp him up, uh, when you go unblockable, when you have 16 to 18, 19 of your tactical charges active, when you have inner bleed on the opponent, which also does a whole lot of damage, and then start dropping your combo finishers with lights, then some of the bleeds that you can see are absolutely filthy. I think I have a 60 hit Red Hulk solo in Labyrinth of Legend. Now, 60 hit Red Hulk solo in Labyrinth of Legends, there are 1.5 million health gun in 60 hits in like hardly over like a minute or two, I think. I don't remember the time, but I think that should work as like proof enough of how savage that uh, damage is. Those bleeds were kicking for so much, and the fact that you don't have to get lucky to access them, you just need to finish your combo, which is the most basic ability. You don't need to throw a special attack, you don't need to do anything special, you don't need to do anything fancy. It's there, it's guaranteed, it's not RNG, it's something you can rely on. It makes it uh, all so much more valuable in my eyes. And then obviously all the other cool stuff, how great he is because of his synergies with Quake and with Goldpool, and uh, how great he is uh, on his own by being able to spend pretty much the entire fight unblockable by bypassing miss, by uh, shutting down a wade, and shrugging of debuffs and all the other cool stuff that he can do that's coming on top of the insane damage output that makes him one of the top kind of like champions in the game period and definitely the best damage over time champion in game with access, with a reliable access to highest amount of damage consistently throughout any fight on damage over time effect. And here is the star disclaimer, unless there is Quake involved. Obviously, because Quake still would top this list if I include her, her damage isn't as savage, but just the overall reach and capability of Quake leaves pretty much everything in dust, and uh, yeah. But that's about it, uh, me talking about Quake and everything else. This video is already quite long, so I'm just gonna cut it short. Let me know about the champions that you think should have made this list. I know that people are be saying Carnage, Squirrel Girl, Massacre, I don't know, Havoc, Gwentpool, Elsa, Ronin, Symbiote Supreme, and all of those are great champions, but I chose to focus on top kind of like end meta options with the champions that you actually do want to invest your catalysts in and that will help you the most in the content, uh, exploring contest overall. But yeah, anyways, I'm gonna catch you guys soon and see ya.